us pray. Our Father in heaven, we bless and praise thee. And one more time, you brought us to your house. We pray, Lord, for those who are sick, that you would forgive us our sins. And remember those who are downtrodden. We pray, Lord, just break now the fallow ground of our hearts and to receive the seed of thy word. Take us out of self and have time the cross. They would not see me, but see thee. If thy spirit fall afresh on us, Pentecostal power. In the name of our Christ, we pray. And all the people said, Amen. We give honor. We honor. The unseen presence of the great head of the church, the Lord Jesus through his spirit, Pastor Bryant, Minister Johnson, who will encourage you from preaching a year, and tomorrow's his birthday, just as old folk would say, stay with it and study and pray, and pray and study and live right, and the sky is the limit. We're so glad to uh, be here, and we see that you all are growing and going with the new edition that wasn't here when I was here two years ago, a few years back in revival. I kind of got lost getting in here, but glad to see progress. As one of the members of one of God's finest church, stand up, stand up, St. Rest. If y'all don't mind, stand up. Amen. They are here, we are here rather, and uh, thank you, and thank you choir, ushers. you notice our choir is wearing uh, ribbons in memory of Sister Shannon McCarty who went on with the Lord. That's commendable to remember her and continue to remember the family in prayer. Now, let me also thank you for your kindness that was extended to my family during my mother's passing. We thank God for her. This is going on with the Lord. And uh, somewhere around the throne, I know she and daddy are together. Amen. Amen. So, how oh, I want to uplift um, a familiar passage of scripture. Um, the Gospel of Mark. Um, chapter 1, verse 17, it's homecoming, um, and usually when we go home, we like to relax, or as Kingfish once said, Amos and Andy, some of you young folk don't know anything about that, you should say unlax, <laughs> amen, and I want to us look at this verse in light of fishing. I know you got plenty of fishermen in here. And some of y'all can't wait till tomorrow to get on the bank on the boat. And it says, follow me, Jesus told them, I will make you fishers of men, or follow me, and I will make you fish for people. I want to use for subject word of encouragement, uh, let's go fishing. Let's go fishing. I submit in these times which we live that the Christian church is going through an identity crisis. I submit that if Jesus came through the doors, the average church in America, he would not recognize his body. Uh, For many, uh, the church has become everything what the Lord said it ought to be. It ought to be, um, for some it's a theater, and only actors and spectators show up at theaters. You determine which one you are. And for many, there are those who would see it as a corporation. 
that the structure, like the business world, or the church has a business aspect. The church is not an organization, it's an organism. And then there are those that see the church as a club. They come when they feel like it, and quit when they feel like it, and pay when they feel like it. And then there are those that would see the church as a bank. Because for many, right here, I'm sure in my voice, the issue is not how many souls have you balanced with the love of Christ, but what are the balances in the bank account? That's well and good. But Jesus describes the church in simple imagery. You are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. And then for our purposes, he calls them, his disciples, and he calls us to be fishers of people, not of bass or trout or cat, but fishers of people. Now, this phrase that he uses, fishers of men or fishers of people, was really one that was familiar in the Greco-Roman world. It was used by Greeks and Romans to speak of getting people to follow their ideas and spread them and spread them and spread them to another generation. In other words, he's saying that you are to spread what I've taught you and win others to Christ. He did not say spread gossip or garbage. But the church is to have on her agenda uh, winning the lost to Christ. We are, as it were, to bait men into the kingdom, to entice them with the good news of the Savior. We are, as it were, to be salespeople, to convince folk to come into the store on a sale that costs them nothing but their faith. We are, as it were, to be about promoting a restaurant where the food is served 24 hours and will satisfy their souls, and it won't cost them a dime, courtesy of Calvary. But then he says, and this word we use for good news evangelion which we get the word evangelist or evangelism is a very interesting word yeah. for the Romans used it to talk about the good things the emperor had done yeah. and the Greeks used it to discuss the benefits and progress of the city states so what the church did was to merge the two meanings together and to say that the gospel is about the good news of God breaking forth into creation and to establish his kingdom in Jesus Christ. And so then, if that is our mission, to invite men to find a home in Jesus, then how shall we liken to winning people to Christ. Well, it's in this text. Fishing. Now, all of us know there are certain entities, certain qualities you have to have to be a good fisherman. Whether you're lying or telling the truth about what you caught. You know, folk will lie said a big one got away and there was no such thing as a big one. First of all, I suggest that you have to find a good spot to fish in. Now, the modern church has often mistaken growth, church growth for church shifting. In terms of most churches grow by taking in members from other churches. Rather than sinners being converted and being bound to Jesus Christ. In other words, we are fishing in an aquarium. We are fishing for folk who've already been caught. Mm, 
we don't have church growth. We have church shifting. Uh, you get mad at the Pleasant Grove and Reverend Bryant. Raise hell here. And go up to Ruston, New Hope, Zion, Traveler. Raise hell there. Uh, come back to Jackson Parish. Raise hell in Galilee. Not church growth, but church shifting. And there's a difference in muscle and fat. Obesity, and no harm to us folk who are overweight, is really not muscle. And most church are obese. To the point we got stuff that's going on that's not relevant to the kingdom. The one thing Jeremiah Wright said during his interview, because he had the audacity to confront America, was this. He said, the average church, if you read the back of the bulletin, ain't nothing going on that's really relevant to the pain and suffering of other folk. Oh, he done got quiet on me. Sisters, tea, and folk came by a loaf of bread. So and so's cakewalk, yeah. and folks paying four dollars for gas. Yeah. So and so's fish fry, yeah. folks barely making it. 